trespasses. You come into our Moadim. Right? Because they're the ways of Yeshua. We rip off the bumper stickers from our car, WWJD, and we replace them with WWYD. What would Yeshua do? He wouldn't go to church as his custom. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. As was his custom, he entered the synagogue for to pray. So the result is the same, but the primary purpose of his coming was to bring Jacob back, to bring Jacob back, and the heathen are so loved and so welcomed, and so and they have the possibility of new life and forgiveness that he goes in your spare time when you finish your job because you'll be able to have so much power from the Ruach HaKodesh in your extra time. Father says to his son, don't forget the heathens. Don't forget them. I love them too. Bring them in. Bring the non-Israelites in. But we've heard a gospel different. Yeshua came for the Gentiles because the Jews don't believe in him anyway and they're not going to be believers. And when, the, when a token Jew gets saved, you bring him into the church, you introduce him to Ishtar, you introduce him to Christmas, you show him how to put up a tree, and you take him to Home Depot to buy balls and to buy lights and to buy graffiti to put on a tree! I didn't learn the true gospel until I was saved for about 12 years. That Yahweh got some of his followers from the heathen and they are comfortably living in Israel. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I'll give you as a light also to the heathen if you do my will. If you do my will and bring Jacob back, Daniel, you listening? If you do my will and bring Jacob back, I'll then, I'll, you can also go ahead and be a light to the heathen. Then, when, then, when, then, when, when, then, when, when you finish the job of bringing Yaakov back. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. There's so many notes here, I don't even know where to begin, my goodness. You can't even, you can't even go through all those notes. But I want you to focus in at the end of verse number six. This is important. You are my event to raise up the tribes of Yaakov, Yishayahu 49.6, and to restore. Hello, these are the restoration scriptures. Why? Because we believe the true gospel. That Yahshua came to restore the tribes of Jacob. Both those that can be seen and both those that can't be seen. Yes, near and far. Correct. And to restore, now notice, I mean, this is very important. Listen. Not only to raise up the general unbelieving tribes, right? When we saw all the tribes, most of them are still in what? In unbelief. So Yahweh says, not only are you going to be a, a, a raising up all the tribes of Israel, even those that are not yet believers, but within those 12 tribes, there's a group, listen very carefully, there's a group called the preserved ones. You know what I'm talking about. And now you need to read the notes. So, Ted, he was coming for all 12 tribes of Israel to what? Show them how to live like the New Testament Christian Savior, right? Wrong. To bring them back to Torah and back to the ways of the fathers. But within those unregenerate, unsaved, unbelieving 10, 12 tribes, there was a preserved ones or a preserved remnant. And watch this to restore the preserved ones of Israel. But notice how he separates <clears throat> the preserved ones from the tribes. Hello? Couldn't he just say tribes? Couldn't he have just said tribes? But Yahweh says the tribes 
and not only to raise them up, what does it mean to raise them up? Rebuild, rebuild the tabernacles, the sukkah of David that has fallen. Not only to rebuild the sukkah of David that has fallen, but to restore... All right, to restore the preserved ones back into the tribes. So there's a preserved group that Yahweh was preserving and protecting so that when his son, the lesser Yahweh, was sent by the father, the greater Yahweh, that those, those preserved ones would come out of the mosque and out of the world and out of the church and be restored back to the 12 tribes. You missed that. Let's read it again. The Evan, or the servant, was being raised up not just to bring Yaakov back, all the tribes of Yaakov, but also to restore a preserved group back into those same 12 tribes. Now, 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 do you like those English words, preserved ones? They mean nothing. Let's go to the Hebrew. Look at, look at footnote number 10. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at footnote number 10. The term preserved ones, are you listening? Yes. I said, are you listening? Oh, yeah. Hey. The, pre, the preserved ones in Hebrew is venotzir. Listen very carefully. Tzamech yud resh yud. Or notzir Yisrael. Those returning from the 12 tribes are called by this name. Yeshua's job is to restore and return all 12 tribes back into one family as his disciples or the preserved ones of Israel into one olive tree. Preserved believers from both houses or all 12 tribes are no longer referred to only as Ephraim Israel or Jewish Israel, but as Nazarenes of Israel here, but as Nazarenes of Israel. Here, the Hebrew word notzar, or notzir, Yisrael, or the Nazarenes of Israel. Of course, the misguided traditional rabbis, now listen carefully, don't want anyone to accept the fact that Nazarenes are really biological Israelites and not pagans. Therefore, in many Jewish Bibles, such as the Stone English edition of the Tanakh, they have left out the vowel pointing of Nazir to make it appear as a different word, then added a different but similar word with vowel pointing in brackets, changing the U to a vav to purposely make the reader unable to pronounce the word Nazir as it actually appears, changing Nazir to Netsuri, which means ruin. So they, they took the word to raise up the Nazir Yisrael or the preserved of Israel to raise up the ruins of Israel. I'm sorry, honey. I may not be much, but I'm not ruined. I'm not the ruin. So the two house movement does not teach that the ten northern tribes were annihilated. Rather, we teach that their preservation took place as a, not as a nation or kingdom, but as individuals, the individual preserved ones of Jacob. The early believers in Jerusalem and Judah and Shomron, Ephraim's capital, were called Notrim, Notre, or Netzarim, Yisrael, the preserved ones from both houses. What were the early believers called? What were the early believers called? Nazarenes. Notrim, Netzarim. Netzarim. That's the same word here that Yeshua would be sent by the Father, not just to restore the tribes of Jacob, but to bring, listen, to bring the Nazarenes out of the church and back into the family of Israel as one. He would restore the tribes and return the Nazarenes who the Jewish Israelites threw out of the synagogue. And people say, well, how did this happen? How did you Israelites wind up in the church? We were asked to leave the synagogue. Uh, excuse me. Let's not rewrite history. The Nazarenes were thrown out of the synagogue. We would still be in the synagogue to this day if we were welcome. That's right. The work of Rabbi Akiva. 
That's right. Uh, the yeah. work of Rabbi. They added the eight, the benediction in the Shimon Esrei, the um, Birchat Haminim, or the curse against. They call it the blessing of the of the Minim, but it's really the curse against believers. So one of the Shimon Esrei 18 benedictions is the curse against believers. So here it even identifies the name of those that will be restored back to Jacob. We believe that through the Miami Beach Israel revival and the two-house message, we are being restored back to Israel. Isn't that what we teach? Yes. Well, that's because we were called the preserved of Israel. Because we're the preserved of Israel, Yahweh is willing to restore us to Israel. Yep. Because even when we were wandering outside of the confines of Israel, we were preserved for Torah, for Shabbat, for Kashrut, for Tzitzit, for head coverings. We were preserved in a state where we weren't welcome to Israel, where religion told us, you can't come back because you believe in Yeshua. And Yeshua said, no, you can't, opposite. You can come back, you can only come back because you believe in me. So look at verse 6. Is anyone enjoying? Oh, yeah. I said, is anyone enjoying? Oh, yeah. Now he's now he said in verse 6. Marx is right. Human religion is he's, the opium of the people. That's right. He said in verse 6 that Yeshua would, re, would raise up the tribes out of unbelief, but take the preserved ones, in Hebrew, the Nazarenes of Israel, and restore them into the camp. Now you know why we're not Messianics, we're Nazarenes. The very term preserved in Hebrew is Nazir or Notre or the preserved of Israel. The believers were first called Nazarenes or the preserved. Rav Shaul Paul, he said, that guy is the ringleader of the preserved ones. He's the big preserved one. He's the big preservative. There are a whole bunch of preserved ones. He's the big preservative. Go get him. He's the ringleader. Sometimes I feel like a ringleader. Don't read into that. There's a remez there. As in three rings. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard. You guys are in some of those rings. Three rings, sir. Hi. Ah, but Yahweh, you could have called me a different movement. I could be winning Filipinos to Yeshua. Put me here with the Israelites. They don't like the food, they don't like the water, they don't like the worship, they don't like the clothing, they don't like murmurers, complainers. Why couldn't you give me a Philippine minister? Yeah, there's no way. They're welcome. Send, Lord, send me to the Philippines. It's not easy there either, is it? Okay. Um, now watch this. I will restore the Nazarenes of Israel. Yeshua was talking in the first person. The father said, Yeshua, it's light, it's easy, it's small. Here's what you do when you come. Here's the gospel. Ready? Here's what Yeshua came to do. One, raise up the tribes from unbelief into belief, bring them back to Torah. Hallelujah! Two, restore the Nazarenes who were thrown out ceremoniously, thrown out of the synagogue, and bring them back into the camp. Bring them back into the camp. You're Israel. I've come to, to restore the Nazarenes of Israel out of the church, out of the world, and bring them back into the camp. And number three, also, just so you don't get bored, I'll give you as a light to the heathen. You sure you want to bring in some heathens? Bring in some heathens. Just so you don't get bored in your mission. We've got it all backwards. You and I have, were taught completely different. That the Gentiles believe, the Israelites don't, and that's it. And therefore, you've got to go to a Gentile church. You have no choice, because they're the only ones who believe. Screwy, Louis thinking. Now watch this. This one formed in the womb of Simso. Yahweh gives his name, now look at verse number 6, the end of verse number 6. That you may be my Yeshua. The ends of the earth to the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth will know you as my Yeshua. Are you getting this? Or should I stop now? No, I well, get it. Go. Not as Jesus. Not as Christus. Not as Hare Hare Krishna. Not as Gita. And Buddha. And Confusioscus. And the Biscioscus cookies. 
when I get the program right and you perform the program and my Notrim and my Jacobians and all everybody plugs into the true gospel, then everyone, the tribes who are being reborn, the Nazarenes who, are, who, were, who were born again but were being preserved, and even the heathen, that light will be called Yeshua. Isn't that what the, the Besorah of Yochanan tells us? Yeah. That the light of Yahweh was called Yeshua and the light came into the world. Amen. 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 You will be my light to the heathen, so the heathen will know you as Yeshua. Here's the program. When I finish the program, the heathen will know you as Yeshua. The Nazarenes, or the preserved ones of Israel, will know you as Yeshua. And even the Jews in the Lubavitch and all the other tribes of Israel who are not yet quickened in their mind and in their heart yet, they'll know me and they'll know you as my, not only my Eved, but, my, but they'll know you as Yeshua, not Jesus. When Yahweh finishes the program, all his people will be Israel, and all Israel will know him not as Jesus or as the bastard, as he's known in parts of Judah, but he'll be known as the blessed, honorable, only son of Yahweh, yes. the master Yahshua. That's pretty neat. I think that's pretty neat. The church will not know him as Jesus. The Jews won't know him as the bastard. The Nazarenes will be back in the camp not having to sell their soul just to hear the gospel on Sunday morning. All things will be gathered back in, into Yeshua. And that's what Yeshua said in Ephesians. That in the fullness of time, it was the Father's will to gather all things in Yahshua. Things in heaven, things under the heaven, things on the earth, things under the earth. It is the purpose and plan of Yahweh to gather all things in Yahshua so that all Israel will know Yahshua because all believers will be Israel. Therefore, all Israel will know him as Yahshua. Where will they know him as Yahshua? To all the ends of the earth. What parts of the earth? Go back to verse 1. All the coastlands and all the nations, even the ones that are furthest away from the truth now, and even the ones that are furthest away from Jerusalem now. Is it time? Australia. If this is not making you happy, you need some cough medicine. <laughs> Can you imagine all your Christian friends, all your baptismos, catolocos, everybody is going to know Yeshua as Yeshua? Yes. Amen. Can you imagine that? Does that blow your mind? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And I got to ask you, where, where, all, all, all these folks, where have they been? Let's continue. This says Yahweh, verse 7. The Redeemer of Israel, the set apart one. And you can have all these notes, my goodness gracious. Wow. 13. All who desire salvation. Look at, look at footnote 13, verse 7. Verse 7. This says Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel. To him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor. Mm. There's just too many notes here. To be the evid over rulers. Notice, Yeshua will be the evid over all the earth's rulers. Melachim will see and arise, rulers will worship. Do you get that? Because of Yahweh that is faithful and the set apart one of Israel, and he shall choose you. What does it mean to be the, the Mashiach? The chosen, the anointed. The Father will declare His Son as the chosen, the anointed. The, and we declare it to be the set-apart one of Israel because the Father, Yahweh, is faithful to choose Yeshua and to send Yeshua and because He will be faithful in His mission to raise up the tribes of Jacob, restore the preserved Nazarenes, restore the Nazarenes, therefore rulers, presidents, Ronald Reagan, Democrats, Republicans, all officials, all poli political leaders, all human leaders, will worship Yeshua. Why? Why will they all worship him? Because he was faithful to raise up the tribes of Jacob, restore the preserved ones. Notice, we weren't welcome in Jacob, were we? 
We were preserved as Nazarenes, but he will restore the Nazarenes to Jacob, and because he will be faithful in even bringing the light of Torah and of Yahweh to the heathen, despite the fact, verse 7, that man will despise him, despite the fact that nations will abhor him, nevertheless, when, all the, when the smoke clears, Brian, when the smoke clears, those kings and rulers that hate him will wind up worshiping him. Amen. Amen. Now, Messianic Judaism tells us we shouldn't worship Yeshua. Why? We should worship the Father. That's a very hot teaching in the Messianic movement. Bukis. There is not one time in the Bissarot when a man or a woman worshipped Yeshua that he rebuked them. Not once. He allowed the worship. He let the worship go on. He didn't terminate it. And he didn't uh, re re reject that worship. What he does do is he works with you and then eventually as you grow in Yeshua, he points you to the Father. So then we worship the Father in Yeshua's name. But you can start out worshiping Yeshua. So this idea in the Messianic movement that, that everybody who worships Yeshua is idolatry, especially the anti-missionaries, well, you worship Yeshua, that's idolatry, and then we go, oh no, oh no, we don't, we, we don't, we, we worship the Father, we, we don't worship Yeshua. Nonsense, read my lips, Bubba. I worship Yeshua. If you got a problem with that, this, this is a, not the congregation for you. I worship Yeshua. I worship a man. Feel better now? Because you cannot show me one place in the best I wrote where Yeshua rebuked anyone who openly worshipped him. Show it to me. Show it to me. Show me one time when he did not receive worship. Show it to me. Men would get on their knees and grab him and hold him and pray and, and pray to him and uh, and give him homage. But eventually he points you to the Father. He says, no, 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 no. The Father is greater than I. So if you're going to worship me, I'm going to redirect you to the Father. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Look at note 13. Not verse, note. All who desire salvation must appoint Yeshua as Savior and desire Yahweh's salvation and desire to live in accordance with Israel's eternal constitution. Called Torah. Look at footnote 15. Many men among Israel and Judah's rulers hated this Yeshua, despite the fact that he came to search for them, find them, and forgive them. He came to be the ultimate server and laid down his life as a ransom for many. Go to note number 16. Not verse, note. Abba Yahweh has chosen Yeshua to bring himself worshipers from the ends of the earth, including kings, rulers, and presidents. Now verse 8. Now this will blow your mind. Ready? I don't know how we're going to get to all this today. But no, we just not. This says Yahweh. Verse number 8. In an acceptable time have I heard you. In the day of Yeshua have I helped you. I will preserve you and give you for a covenant of the people to restore the land, to cause you to inherit the desolate heritages. Where else do we see this? Look at your notes. Note number 17. Where, does we see, where do we see this quoted? 2 Corinthians. Correct. 2 Corinthians 6.2. Were the Corinthians an Ephraimite or a Jewish assembly? You sure? You, sh you sure? Correct. Correct. Corinthia, Corinthians were a predominantly Ephraimite assembly. Amen. Not Jewish, Ephraimite from the ten tribes. Amen. Okay. He quotes this in 2 Corinthians 6 2 that he says, Now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. But watch what he's quoting. Mm -hmm. Watch what he's quoting. In an acceptable time, I've heard you, in the day of Yeshua, have I helped you? 
I will preserve you and give you as a covenant for the people to restore the land to cause you to inherit the desolate heritage. Amen. In the Pasha, remember I warned you about this, in the literal, it is not talking about the Corinthians having to get saved before no man can get saved. That's the way it's presented in the Birkha the Shah, right? Hurry up! Hurry up! Get saved! Now's the time to get saved! Right? In the original Yeshayahu 49, verse number 8, the Father is speaking to the Son and saying, Yeshua, I hear you. You're the high priest over in your covenant Israel. I hear you. I hear you. Who are you praying for? The raised up tribes of Jacob, those who have come back from Jacob, and the Nazarenes, the preserved ones of Israel. You're praying for them, you're longing for them, you're seeking for them, you're looking for them, you desire them. Don't worry, my son. I have in an acceptable time, what time? In the days when the two houses are becoming one again? That's our day, that's our time, that's our moment, that's our period, that's our time in history. Yes, yes, yes. Time is coming. In that time, I will hear you. I will choose you to be my servant to bring this task to pass. In that day of Yahshua, I will help you to bring the purpose to pass. The Father through Yeshua is looking for the Lord of the house of Israel. It's not Yeshua, the Father through Yeshua. Watch, I will help you. How do Yeshua know where to find you, Daniel? I'm going to pick on you today because you're sitting over there. Yeah. You sit back there, I won't pick on you next week. Yeah. Only kidding. All right. So it's the, how did Yeshua know, how did Yeshua know where to find you? Some of you, he found you in, 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 in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Some of you were in a Baptist church. You find me on my bed. Some of you were witnesses that, that were jehovah -ing. The Father was cho chose Yeshua, and together they went looking, the Father in him, he in the Father, because the accepted time to revive the tribes, to preserve the Nazarenes and bring them back as preserved, faithful remnant into Israel, the accepted time. So this idea that, it, like they teach in the church, brother, now you need to get saved. Right now? Yeah, right now. This minute? Yeah, this minute. Why? Now is the acceptable time. Now is the... No! Pastor, slow down, baby. In the original Pasha, the father is speaking to Yeshua and saying, I've heard you. Let's get this Israel job finished. Let's get this restoration underway because now in the latter days it is the acceptable time. My son, you cannot fail. Don't think that way because you don't be discouraged because you were chosen for this task. How do you know you're chosen? Because I am in you, going with you on your search for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am in you. You cannot fail. I am in you. This is the acceptable time and I have heard you. This is all about the Father telling the Son, do you believe in the two houses? How many believe, think Yeshua believes in the two houses? <laughs> I get that all the time. Rabbi Moshe, or Brother Moshe, and you know what happens when I hear that. I'm like, do -do 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 -do. either they're mad at me, they don't understand the scriptures, but nine out of ten times, persons in the congregation, well, Rabbi, you know, Rabbi, 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 and when they get angry and they leave, they write me a letter. Mr. Konachowski, Brother Moshe, I'm like, you understand? Everybody gets angry at me, they wind up calling, trust me. They wind up calling me Brother Moshe. All right, really. Okay, so let's continue. It happens all the time, so I'm used to it. Okay, go back to verse eight. This says, Yahweh, you sure, don't worry. I, I, you can't fail and accept the time I heard you. In the day that you will appear as in this task, in the day of, of Yeshua, hello, when did Yeshua appear on earth? In the day of Yeshua. To do what? The Father's plan. Regather Israel. When did he show up? In the day of Yeshua. Hello. He showed up in the day of Yeshua. In the day of Yeshua, or the day of the restoration of the Notrim of Israel, you'll be on your own. 
Toe to toe? No way. Toe to toe? You'll just have to make do. You'll be on your own. You'll never hear this in church. This is what the Father and the Son are doing together. They went out looking for you because he knew what you didn't know. That you have Israelite blood in your veins. Which is why you cry when you see a menorah. Which is why you cry when we take out the Torah. Which is why you feel a, a drawing, a leaning, a, a tendency, a, 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 a proclivity to, to be attracted to the things of Yehuda. Because it was in you and you didn't know it was in you, but Yeshua and the Father knew. And together they cannot fail. And they've been looking for you together. That's how important you are. That's how important you are to the Father's program. When he sent his son, he didn't send him alone. He went with him looking for you. Son, don't worry. It's accepted. I hear you. I'll be with you to help you find these hurting lost sheep. I see him doing the Ave Maria and it's breaking my heart. Got you I see them praying for praying for Uncle Ernie to pop out of purgatory and my guts and my, my kishkis are being ripped out. I'll be with you, trust me. We got a big religious demons to turn over. You don't know how you're not gonna be on your own. Because in order to rescue Israel, there's gotta be a whole bunch of religious demons cast out. My goodness, religious demons don't 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 let people go easy. Well, oh, Rabbi, I don't receive that. My father was Catholic, my mother was Baptist, and my grandfather the day big day was a was a, was a, was a, was a traveling minister, and my great grandfather was the son of Thomas Paine, and my great great grandfather was a, 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 a pastor of five churches and was best friends with Alexander Hamilton. Guess what? It don't matter. When Yahweh will take you from every religious system of your forefathers and make you an Israelite if you want to be there. But I'm white. I'm black. I'm a Spanish. I, I didn't know Spanish people are Jewish. No, I didn't know that, I didn't know that either. Until I found out that Israel comes in all shapes, races, and colors. I used to think as a little boy that if you didn't look like me, you couldn't be an Israelite. In New York, if you don't have a fat stomach, you, you can't even be Jewish. <laughs> so I, I knew I was Jewish. I had a fat stomach, ate matzo ball soup, and liked to fill the fish. <laughs> you know, when you know in Eretz Israel, the, the house of Yehuda comes in all shapes. That's right. But then I found out Israelites look like all kind of folks, all kind of people, and the Father and Yeshua know who they are. Let's get it. All right, now watch this. Look, listen, listen. Yahweh says this. Now look, Yeshua, you can't fail because I will help you. Listen. I will preserve you. See, Yeshua of Nazareth. Yeshua, the preserved one. You think that's a, a coincidence that he is Yeshua of Nazareth? No. He is Yeshua, the preserved one. Where else would he live but in the city called the city of preservation? Because he was coming.